Songs and singing have always been an important part of Aboriginal culture, but songs are owned by individuals and they have the right to say who sings them and when. And usually they are only used for ceremony. And the individual exercises very careful control over who uses his song. In most groups, the women are not allowed to sing or own any song. They play a background role in the ceremony. But things are changing now for the Aborigines with tape recorders and radios and even TV and video available to them, they are adopting the Western idea of singing and adopting Western musical instruments too. We'd like to see the Christians being unrestricted in their singing of praises to God with their guitar. Notice that many do impose a restriction on themselves. They only sing in English. Some SIL people felt concerned about this. We wanted them to be free to really express their souls to the Lord in song using their own language as well as English. And we wanted them to be free to use their own style of music as well. So with this in mind, SIL conducted a songwriter's workshop, bringing together about 40 people from nine different language groups to live in a relaxed way, the way they like to live, at our centre at Berrima, to share their experiences and to get guidance in writing their own songs and music. We had a couple of hours of lectures each day, followed in each case by working sessions in which each language group composed their own songs. Each one was encouraged to develop his own talent and ability. Let's just drop in now on one of the workshop lectures and hear what Noreen Pym is teaching. There are two ways that you can get a new class. One way is for you to think of it in your mind and to write it down. The other way is for you to translate a song that already exists. Now, I want to talk to you this morning a little bit about translating. I put a big word up here. It's spoken by the Awaita people on Cracker Island. Here it is. Nad Balda Gulad San Gilda. Now, let's have a quick look at this word. We can break this word up into little bits. And this is what we get. The nad means we, but not you. Then we get will. This bit says mouth. This bit says together. This bit says take. And this bit means backwards and forwards. So if we put all that together and we translate each little bit exactly as it means, what we end up with is we will take our mouths together backwards and forwards. But that doesn't make any sense. What it really means is we'll talk about it together after you've gone. So if we just keep the word and we change the word into the words of another language, we end up with something that doesn't really make sense. If we want to keep the meaning the same, 
we have to make sure we choose the words that give the same meaning. The first group exercise was to translate a song from English into their own language. The name of the Lord is a strong and mighty power. Now that's hard because we have to think what it means. What do we mean when we say the name of the Lord? What do we mean when we say that is a strong and mighty power? Let's have a look at the picture. In the old days, when people didn't have any weapons like they've got today and only had bows and arrows and spears and things like that, they used to build a huge tower, very strong walls, bombs that have a lot of repetition in them because they're all over Another way to get songs into one's own language, as well as translating, is to use an existing tune but make up one's own words for the song. The Aborigines were given clues in this area as well. Going over and over and over the same thing. That's what we call repetition or repeating. If I get this hammer and uh, nail and block of wood and I give it one hit like that, I can easily take it out, eh? Okay. I give it two hits, I'm repeating the action, aren't I? But it's getting a bit harder to take out, but we can get it out. If I give it three hits, um, I don't think I can get that out. Not with my hand, anyway. Alright? So I'm really hitting at it. Three hits. That's the sort of thing we want to do with our song. We want to get the main idea, the main message of the song, and really hit it. And that's what um, you know happens in those songs that have a chorus, because every time you come to the chorus, you get back to the main part. Again there was a class exercise. They were given a tune composed by Ivan Jordan, who was on the staff, and each group made up their own words to it. The results were then presented to the class. The third approach is to take some existing words, such as a scripture passage, and write one's own tune for them. So there were lectures on melody making. One of these on the end of your line, don't you? What is it? Hook. Oh. Not a very big one. All right. Same in music, there's musical hooks. Those people who listen to our songs, we want to catch them with some sort of hook that we write, that we put in our song. Because unless that happens, they're going to forget our song and the message won't get across. Chester Street had a good way of getting his message across. He's been successful in songwriting and music making and he had some very useful tips to pass on to the rest of us. Oh, little traps or swords or nice meat on the end of the hook make it look attractive. That's what we should do with our songs. He taught us how to compose tunes. Now the reason that that's most important is because that's the thing that people will remember. That's the thing that if you write a good tune that will keep your song alive, the people will remember it from. And he gave us examples, both from the keyboard. Okay. You can almost think about, you can almost see him climbing the tree, can't you, when you hear the notes going up and up and up and up. So sometimes the words are like... And the tape recorder. <laughs> But it's 
good beat, the words are really simple. But a lot of the songs... And the final way to get a song in one's own language is for one to compose both the words and the melody. When they began doing this, we began to see a distinctive Aboriginal style developing. The result is that the scriptures and the songs complement each other, with the scripture being the source of inspiration for the songs and the songs reinforcing the message of the scripture. Then Susan Hargrave led us in a discussion about using traditional music styles. She had some examples for us on tape. And Ivan Jordan told us about the way Christian corroborees developed at Vajamani. We can't sit down and write Christian corroborees. We can only write down what God has told us. And so we have to check and check and recheck, and we still have to do it, to make sure that the Christian corroboree we put down really is straight with God's book of the Bible. So some groups composed Christian songs using their traditional tunes and instruments, as is shown by this group at the concert we gave at the Faggot Reserve at the end of the workshop. While some of their songs had elements of both Aboriginal and European music styles. At another concert, the group from the Torres Straits Army demonstrated a very unique style. with sound recording techniques and Noel Batchelor of Gospel Recording had some useful information for us on this area. That you don't get right up to it like that and talk so or sing or whatever. Ah. Mm -hmm. Noel also looked after the studio recording of songs. These are some of the songs that were produced at the workshop and presented at the concert. This group from Umbacumba are presenting one of their compositions. Esta 
And here's a sample from the Pidgeton Jada Lady of Runabella. Many of the songs, like this one in the Burrata language, showed a distinct blending of Aboriginal and European characteristics. One song in the Anindulagua language was made up especially for the communion service. And here's a song in the Wabi language of Satimanu. At the end of the workshop, Noel Bond of Murray Island said, The Spirit of the Lord has moved and I have been touched. I'm confident to make a new song after what I've learned here at SIL. My main aim after I leave SIL is to go back to Murray and to teach others what I've learned here. Gordon Mutbeard Bedder of Menangrida said, I think we will write in our language now so that people will understand. And Gerald from Wadaya said, I feel like staying here because everybody helping each other, happy, smiling, Good play. This spirit of love and Christian fellowship reached its climax on the last day of the workshop. 
the way everybody joined in farewelling each other proved to us that the workshop had been a success. So shake hands to your brother and say to him, may the Lord will be with you when you go there. This song is called, there was song is called, Goodbye. Thank you. 